welcome to Maulana Azad National Urdu University's Global Classroom. The title of today's lecture, Concord, is meant specifically for the second year students of BA, BSc, BCom. However, it does not mean that the other students leave. I advise all students of Urdu University to stay tuned in and to remain glued to their TV sets for the next 30 minutes as I try to explain to you what Concord is all about. Concord plays a very significant role both in oral communication as well as in written communication. If you are not good at Concord, the meaning that you attempt to convey to your listener or to your reader may be even completely lost. Therefore, it is very important that you pay attention throughout today's lesson. The objectives of today's lesson, as you can see on your screen, are to help you understand the meaning of Concord, to explain the principles governing Concord, to learn the use of Concord. Before we proceed any further, I would like to put a question to you. If you have already read Block 2, Unit 3, on which today's lesson is based, I am sure you will be in a position to answer the question. My question is very simple. What is Concord? Yes, you are right. Concord refers to the agreement between the verb and the subject in a sentence. Just now I said, yes, you are right. If you have been paying attention, you would have noticed that the verb are agrees with the subject you. So you see what we understand by the term concord. Concord, as you all know, is governed by certain principles. Now these principles governing concord may be studied as the types of concord. And what are these three types of concord? Grammatical concord, notional concord and concord governed by the rule of proximity. We shall now try to study each one of these three separately. First, let us look at grammatical concord. What do we understand by grammatical concord? In grammatical concord, the subject agrees with the verb both in person as well as in number. Listen to the sentence. He laughs loudly. The verb loudly agrees with the subject he. Similarly, another sentence could be, I write slowly. Here the verb write agrees with the subject I. Now, if grammatical concord is clear, let us move on to notional concord. What is notional concord? How is it governed? Notional concord refers to the agreement of the verb with the subject according to the notion or the idea of number. Take for example the word government. Is it singular or is it plural? Well, if your notion of government is of one single unit, you would consider it in the singular and you may tell a sentence like, the government has declared a holiday tomorrow. On the other hand, if you think government is plural, it consists of a number of people, then your sentence may read, the government have announced a holiday tomorrow. And both sentences would still be right. Let us now move on to concord by the rule of proximity. In the rule of proximity, the verb agrees with the subject closest to it. One thing to remember is that the rule of proximity is applied only when there is more than one subject in a sentence. So, if you are confident of grammatical concord, notional concord and the rule of proximity, we can proceed further. But before we proceed further, there are certain concepts that should be very clear to you before we proceed. One such concept is person. In English, there are three kinds of person. First person represented by I and V. The second person represented by you. And the third person represented by he 
she, it, they, or it could be the name of an individual or names of persons, places, animals or things. Another concept that you should be familiar with before we move forward is number. In English, number refers to the singular and the plural form of the noun or the pronoun. Now let us look at both the person and the number together. Look at these very carefully. In the course of my talk today, I'll be using these phrases quite frequently. First person singular, second person singular, third person singular, first person plural, second person plural, third person plural. Now that you are familiar with person and number, let us take one step forward and learn two more basic factors. These are with reference to the verbs to be and to have. It is essential that you learn the conjugation of the verb to be and the verb to have in the simple present tense in order to use concord correctly. Let us first look at the verb to be. The verb to be in the singular has the following forms. Am is used with the first person, are with the second person, is with the third person. While in the plural, the verb to be has the following forms. We are, you are, they are. That is, the verb to be remains are in all the plural forms. Now, let us move on and look at the verb to have. The verb to have in the singular is represented as have in both the first and the second persons while it is has in the third person. In the plural, the verb have remains the same. That is, you can say we have, you have or they have. And now that you are familiar with the basics, I think we can proceed further and try to help you understand more about the uses of first grammatical concord. Look at these examples. I have three pens, she has four apples, they have some good books. In the first and the third sentences, the verb have agrees with the subject either I or they. However, in the second sentence, the verb is has because the subject is third person singular. Let us look at some more uses of grammatical concord. My son reads good books. His sons also read good books. This is very important. Are you confused? I don't think so. In the first sentence, the subject is my son, third person singular. Therefore, the verb agrees and it is written as reads. Remember, when I write reads, the letter S does not indicate the plural. It is the verb ending with S indicating the third person singular. And in the second sentence, his sons also read good books. We have the verb read, which is used to agree with the subject, his sons, which is now in the plural. Now, if th these examples are clear, let us move a little forward with more uses of grammatical concord. I like cheerful people. We are enjoying this lesson and I sure hope we are all enjoying this lesson. Look at the two examples. The verb like agrees with the subject I. If I were to say he likes apples, then the verb like is no longer like, it is likes because he, third person singular. In the second sentence, the verb are agrees with the subject, which is the first person plural. More examples of grammatical concord. He was worried, they were worried. In these examples, I have used the past tense form of the verb to be. Was agrees with the subject, which is third person singular. In the second sentence, were the verb agrees with the subject, which is third person plural. To proceed further with grammatical concord, look at these examples. I am delivering a lecture. They are listening to my lecture. He drives a car. 
In the third sentence, the verb drives is used along with the subject he, which is in the third person singular. In the first sentence, it is I, which is the subject and therefore the verb is am, while in the second sentence, the verb are agrees with the third person plural subject. Now let us look at a few other uses of grammatical concord. Salma is watching a movie. Ahmed, Ghaus and Riaz are in the playground. He laughs loudly. We laugh softly. In the first sentence, the subject is third person singular and the verb agrees accordingly. In the second sentence, the subject is in the plural. Ahmed, Raus and Riaz, we are talking about three persons, so the verb agrees accordingly. In the last two sentences, we have the singular as well as the plural forms. He laughs loudly, the verb agrees with the subject. And in the last sentence, we laugh softly, you find the verb laugh which agrees with the first person plural subject. Now, if you think the whole concept of grammatical concord is familiar to you and you're confident enough to use grammatical concord correctly, I think it is time we move on to the next form, that is the rule of proximity. Let us look at some examples. The Prime Minister and five members of the Parliament are leaving for China. If you remember, I told you the rule of proximity is applied when there is more than one subject. In the sentence, the Prime Minister is one subject, five members of the Parliament forms another subject. Which subject is nearer to the verb? The plural subject, members of the Parliament and the verb agrees accordingly. Now study the second sentence. Five members of the Parliament and the Prime Minister is leaving for China. In the second sentence, the word order has been reversed. Now it is the singular subject, the Prime Minister, which is closer to the verb and therefore the verb is no longer are but is. Now look at another use of the rule of proximity. The soldiers and the lieutenant is listening keenly. Two subjects, the singular subject preceding the verb and therefore the verb in the singular. Look at the next sentence. There is reversal of word order. The soldiers, which is in the plural, now comes closer to the verb. The lieutenant and the soldiers are listening keenly. So you see how the rule of proximity is used. Let us look at a few more uses of the rule of proximity. We have my father and my uncles live in the ancestral house. You can also say my uncles and my father lives in the ancestral house and the same rule of proximity is being applied. In the first sentence, the subject, my uncles, is closer to the verb and therefore the verb agrees with the plural subject. In the second sentence, the subject closer to the verb is my father, which is in the singular and therefore the verb agrees with the subject, which is third person singular. Let us look at some more uses of the rule of proximity. The teacher and the students are in the classroom. And another sentence which reads, the students and the teacher is in the classroom. You see the same rule of proximity is being applied. Students is plural and the verb are agrees with students. In the second sentence, the word teacher is singular. It is third person singular. And you cannot say are, it is wrong to say the students and the teacher are in the classroom, it would be wrong. You will instead have to say the students and the teacher is in the classroom. Look at this use of the rule of proximity. Either Rahman or the girls have to do it. The girls being the plural subject which is closer to the verb, the verb have agrees with it. In this sentence, Either the girls or Rahman has to do it because Rahman, the subject, is singular and the verb has agrees accordingly. Let us proceed a little further and look at some more uses of the rule of proximity. The mother and her children play in the park. 
There are two subjects in the sentence, the mother and her children. The subject that is closer to the verb is her children. Therefore, the verb plays agrees with the plural subject. In the second sentence, there is again a reversal of the word order. We say the children and their mother plays in the park because remember mother is singular, it is third person singular and the verb play has to agree with the subject that is closest to it. Now if you think you are comfortable with the uh, grammatical concord as well as concord governed by the rule of proximity, I think we can comfortably move to notional concord. Let us look at some examples of notional concord. The government have announced a policy. You can very well say the government has announced a new policy. It all depends on your idea of government as I said in the beginning. If you think government consists of a number of people, it is in the plural, fine, use the verb have. But if you think government is one single unit, it is the singular form, then feel free to use has. The two sentences are equally correct. Let us now look at notional concord and some uses. The committee is having a meeting. You can also say the committee are finding it difficult to reach a decision. Why? In the first sentence, you have treated committee as a single unit and therefore, based on your notion, your idea, the verb in the singular is used. In the second sentence, your idea of the committee is of a number of people put together. It is in the plural and you have comfortably used the plural form of the verb depending on your notion. Let us proceed further with notional concord. The public has a right to information. The public are requested not to throw garbage on the streets. The same word public in the two sentences, but the verb in the first sentence in the singular, the verb in the second in the plural, because the same principle of notional concord governs the two sentences. In the first, public is considered as singular and hence has. In the second sentence, public is considered as plural and therefore, the verb used is also in the plural. Let us look at notional concord and its uses once again. Bread and jam is good for breakfast. If you think bread and jam is one part of your breakfast, bread and jam are good for your breakfast. If you think bread and jam are two items on your breakfast. So you see how everything depends on your idea, your notion. It could be singular or it could be plural. To proceed further with notional concord and its uses, look at these. The army holds an exhibition every year. The army holds an exhibition every year. In the first sentence, the verb holds agrees with army because it is considered to be in the singular. In the second sentence, the verb hold agrees with the same subject because now you consider it to be in the plural. So, notional concord, as we have been telling you again and again, depends on your notion or your idea of the subject. Look at these examples. Her family is at the railway station, meaning you consider the whole of a family as one single unit. However, if you consider her family as consisting of different individual members, then your sentence could be, her family are coming to dinner. You're talking about all the different members of a family together. So, we have looked at the uses of grammatical concord, the use of concord by the, uh, by the rule of proximity. We've also looked at the uses of concord by notional concord. Now, if you think you're comfortable with all these three uses, the uses of grammatical concord, the use of the rule of proximity, and the use of notional concord, I think we can proceed further to look at some more very interesting examples of the use of concord. Look at this example. His son and heir was not interested in the business. Now why is the verb used in the singular? Because his son and his heir are one and the same person. 
Look at the second sentence now. The secretary and the accountant of the company were present. And why did I say were? Why did I not say was? Because in the second sentence, the secretary is one employee of the company and the accountant is another employee of the company. We are talking about two different employees, the secretary and the accountant. And therefore, the verb agrees with the subject which is in the plural. To look at some more examples, study these sentences. The teacher as well as the students was very tired. Now you might wonder, even the students comes before the verb, why is was used? Look carefully at the sentence. As well as the students is separated by the use of commas. It is an appositional phrase. You can remove the whole of it as well as the students from the sentence and the sentence will still read logically. The teacher was very tired and that is our subject and the verb accordingly agrees with the singular subject. Look at the second sentence. The Prime Minister along with a number of officials is on a visit to the affected areas. Here again the subject closest to the verb is officials in the plural but the verb is used in the singular. Why do you think this is the case? Look again and you will find along with the number of officials being separated by the use of commas. The main subject is the Prime Minister which is in the singular. Now if the subject is singular, the verb has to agree with the singular subject. Therefore, the Prime Minister is on a visit to the affected areas. It reads correctly, does it not? Yes, it does. Now let us look at some more examples. A total of 20 students were in the room. Now why is the verb in the plural? A, remember, is indefinite. It could be any number. So we have used the plural form of the verb. In the second sentence, we say the total number of students in the class is 40. And this time the verb is in the singular because look at the article before total. It is the definite article. We are speaking about a definite number even though in both the uh, examples, students remains in the plural. Now, if you would like to look at some more examples, study these examples. Every boy is present for the radio talk. Now, when I say every boy, I may be referring to 10 boys, I may be referring to 20 boys, or I may be referring to 15 boys. But the verb is in the singular because I am talking about each boy as an individual. And so I say, every boy is present for the radio talk. None of my friends has a bike. Friends is in the plural, but the verb is in the singular. Why is it so? When I say none of my friends, I am not referring to all my friends. What I mean to say is that not even one of my friends, one being singular, the verb agrees with the subject and has is accordingly used. Look at a few more examples. A pair of scissors is on the table. Every time you use phrases like a pair of scissors, a pair of trousers, remember it is in the singular and the verb should also be in the singular. Look at this one. One and a half months is a long period. Months appears to be in the plural, but the verb that follows is in the singular. Whenever you have phrases like, for example, one and a half week, one and a half hour, the verb that follows will be in the singular. Now, if you think we have given you enough uses of concord, grammatical concord, the rule of proximity, notional concord, and many more examples to follow, I'm sure you're now comfortable enough to use concord more significantly in the course of both your oral speech as well as your written speech. But at the same time, I wonder if you have noticed in the course of this lesson, all my examples were based on the present tense form of the verbs. Only the verb to be was used in the past tense. 
why have i not used the other past uh, the past tense forms or the future tense forms of the verbs for examples do they play any role in concord or is the use of the present tense more significant for concord if these questions are bothering you i advise you to visit your study center meet your counselor in english and clarify these doubts at the same time i expect you to be more thorough with the use of concord as given in unit 3 block 2 another aspect that you might consider is the a uh, use of gender in concord which i have not touched in today's lesson that is another aspect which you can explore when you go to your study center next time to recapitulate grammatical concord is the agreement between the verb and the subject both in person and in number in notional concord the verb agrees with the subject according to the notion or the idea of number while in the rule of proximity the verb agrees with the subject closest to it if these are clear to you i have a little exercise that i would like you to solve solve it take it to the study center and have it evaluated by your counselor in english note down these sentences and correct them seema you and i are going to delhi the students and the teacher are listening to mr ramesh one of my friends live in assam he run fast they climbs the tree i repeat seema you and i are going to delhi the students and the teacher are listening to mr ramesh one of my friends live in assam he run fast they climbs the tree you may also write to us at this address the director directorate of distance education Maulana Azad National Urdu University Gachibauli Hyderabad 500032 Until then this is Dr Gulfisha Habib reader in English Directorate of Distance Education Maulana Azad National Urdu University signing off goodbye and take care